Hi everyone, this is Mike89. Welcome to the tenth video in my Sonic 3 and Knuckles tutorial series. This video is going to cover Lava Reef. Let's get stuck into it. Uh, so immediately, something new that wasn't done when I did this. Uh, move out to the left as soon as you spawn here, and you will land at the very top of that slope, uh, which runs you down just a little bit faster. You know, save those frames. Once you get past this section of rock here, you actually want to move a little bit right so that instead of landing on this platform, you go straight past it and down. Uh, once you get to here, uh, there's a ch random chance that you'll get stopped by this platform here right under this stalactite. Um, if it happens, just spin ash again, you'll be fine. Yeah, a bit like that. Um, get up to these stairs here, you want to make your way up, aside from this first one, you would just jump to this one here. Um, after that, you want to make the jumps th uh, three stairs at a time. So basically the way that I like to do this is if I'm down here and I want to jump up to this one here, I hold jump and right up to the top of the jump and then I let it go so that instead of running up against the wall I end up here on the left half of the step ready to, to make the next jump. So holding jump and right out to about there and then let go and then up and that lets you take it three at a time pretty comfortably. Um, there's something really really random that can happen here. Uh, it's very rare but if you come through here at just the right speed or position, or I don't know what it is, but sometimes if you're holding right through here, you get pushed down, and when holding right, you'll zip left, and you'll end up in a section that's about 9 to 12 seconds ahead. It'll put you right next to a fire shield. Now, we're going to pick up that fire shield anyway, so I'll show you exactly where we end up. Um... You shouldn't rely on it happening. I haven't included it here deliberately because you wouldn't expect to get this in a run. But you should always be holding right as you go down this slope, just in case. Now, if that doesn't happen, uh, what you want to do is there are a number of places you can actually get stopped on the ramp above. So, pretty much as soon as you hit the ramp here, you want to jump. And you can see I wasn't doing that before either. I was waiting until much later to jump to keep my speed. Um, what you actually want to do is be going here, not quite so quickly, but with quite a bit of control. So you can jump, for example, off this straight up to the switch. And Ideally, you want to release your spin dash there at about 17 and a half seconds. So we're now holding right. You switch to holding left as you exit here. And just as you go over the ramp, you want to hold one of the jump buttons. I don't know why, but if you start holding one of the jump buttons over here, you'll, you'll actually, more often than not, you'll land on this platform instead of getting kicked down to here. Being here is ideal because it lets you jump over where those spikes are going to pop out, these ones here. And so as you can see as well, now the path is open for you to carry on through. Um, and when you're bouncing off that yellow spring there, you want to make sure you move away from the wall, hit the spring on the right hand side, because otherwise you don't have enough momentum to get all the way up to there. Um, if you land on the left hand side of the spring, you're better off just landing here and then jumping across. Anyway, so this is the fire shield that you get pushed down to if the um, if the zip goes off for you. So now spin dash out to the left. Um, here, this thing, uh, if you're facing left, the spin dash will push this down. If you're facing right, it'll push it up. Um, and in order to get it to go at the maximum speed, you have to keep mashing the buttons. So we're mashing all the way down to about, about here, maybe a little bit later than that. And then you want to let it go. Oh, so here I've done something different. Um, you can either just let it go and let it drop down to about this position naturally, or 
you can let it go all the way down there and fire shield to determine exactly when you want it to drop and then fire shield back this way in order to get out like that. Um, switch there. From this platform you want to do a one tap spin dash and then jump straight off this platform. So I recommend using all three buttons to try and get one jump here. And then you want to do a fire shield at the height of the jump and that will get you onto that switch. Uh, and then we wait for this to drop. As soon as the camera re-centers, uh, you want to do a little tap jump like that, just over the top of that uh, drill that's falling, um, and use your fire shield ability as you go underneath the ceiling, and that should hit the switch. There. Uh, now this is probably the single worst part of the game. There are two different sections of floor here, and one you can see here that the rocks are really jagged and you don't really know exactly what kind of angle you're going to get. These blocks here are actually breakable from underneath. Um, there's a red spring down there that if you hit them from that side it will break those blocks. And they're not actually um, wall or floor tiles, they're actually sprites, which means they're flat. So, it, this next part, you want to jump as soon as you end up on the flat sprite. Uh, what makes this even more tricky is that you have to hold the jump for exactly three frames and you have to have at least 75% of your spin dash speed. And what happens, which you'll see in a little bit, if you get the height just right, then you go to about here and the game thinks that you're going to clear this corner and it tries to put you up onto this platform here. And then that platform goes, no, I'm not going to I'm not going to let you land on here. You're too low. And it pushes you down. And so you just fall into the wall. And in a few seconds you'll see what that looks like. So, I think it's this one here. No, it's the next one. So, you spin dash, jump from the very left side of this flat sprite. And you can see here that I'm embedded inside the wall. And now I'm dropping. Now as soon as you see this, uh, Sonic's going to be stuck in a wall. So you actually want to hold left. And that will let you zip out this way. As you drop, tap right. Land immediately. And do a one tap spin dash. And then jump off this, off this rock here. Just off the corner like that. And that will give you an upward jump high enough to get out of this pit. It's actually quite tricky to get out of that pit if you're not quite sure what to do. Because again, you can't really see very well where the ramps are on this ground. Um, as soon as you clear this corner, you want to do a fire shield dash out this way and immediately hold left to slow yourself down and drop into this gap. Carrying on here, um, spin dash, you want to land on this, you want your spin dash to be fast enough that you land here. Uh, as soon as you do land here, make sure you roll, because if you don't, that enemy there is going to hit you. And we don't want that, because we really want to keep the fire shield for running over that. Now, uh, that previous jump should have been from pretty much exactly where the checkpoint is. That will give you enough height to get over that enemy and do a fire dash through there. Um, so now we now we stop here. We actually don't want to scroll the screen all the way to the right. Because there's another one of these coming up. And it is on the camera timer. But if you go all the way to the right, then it will have triggered already and it'll be out of range. So what we're going to do is we're going to just stand on the left hand side of this platform for now. But as it comes, as the top of it comes into line with this ceiling here, then we're going to fire dash over to the right and trigger it. And it's also important that once you do that you move a little bit back to the left. Both of these platforms, once you get up to the top and you're trying to jump out, it's a little bit of an overhang so you can't be standing right 
to the right edge of this or else you're just going to drop down and look silly. But instead we jump around it like that and then we jump onto the platform here. As you can see, it's within range of a jump and is moving quite nicely. If you had run to the right at the start, it would be up here on its way down and you'd lose a couple of seconds waiting for it to get back to here. Uh, so same again, um, make sure you wait a little bit to the left of the right wall because of this overhang again. Jump up onto the switch. Up to the top here. Uh, this isn't strictly necessary but I like to drop the fire shield here. Uh, the main reason for that is insta shield increases your effective range uh, and this boss is just out of your range normally if you're just jumping. Um, that jump there, I would recommend also insta shielding up here so that you can control yourself back down onto the center of this enemy. As you can see, I've got to spend a couple of frames doing that on the ground. Uh, okay, so start this fight on the left because this will mean that you're out of the way of all of the shots. So we want to move just a little bit over to the right and the fur. The hand on the left is going to pop out around here. So you want to move to there first. Charge your spin dash. And then jump into the one on the right and get bounced back to the left wall. From there, we just stand underneath, get three insta shield hits like that. Um, dodge these bullets on the way back go over to the right hand side and then you, you see how I dodge all of those. Uh, now you want to move to this rock here as soon as the hand appears because under that rock is a fire shield that's going to be very handy in Act 2. So, uh, You would have noticed that the boss bobs up and down slightly um, just a little bit um, when it bobs down for the fourth time, you want to do that jump. Just as it's moving down, you do a full jump and then you land on it for one, two, and then insta shield this third one to make sure that you get it before it goes away. And so, watching again this time. So, one, two, three, four, and now jump. You can see there. That Sonic's jumped. And one, two, three. Uh, now, there is an immensely difficult trick that you can that you can do here. Um, like I said, the fire shield's gonna pop out from here, but a thing that can possibly happen, if you've seen a Tails run of this, Tails can just neatly run under this shield, and it's quite easy. Um, the box doesn't get high enough for Sonic to run under it. So what Sonic has to do is roll under it and then slow himself down so that he stands up before the roll actually breaks the box. The timing for it is ridiculous and I don't expect anyone to ever do it in a single segment run, but it's a free minute if you can get it because you get stuck in the ground and you can go straight to the end of Act 2 from here. It's the sort of thing that there's no real risk in attempting it, so why not? But as you can see, it doesn't like to happen. Anyway, so that's Act 1 complete. Um, now... Act 2 is a very cycle based stage and most of the cycles involve spikes and or fire. So it's very important that we pay attention to where the spikes are. At the moment they're not going to get in your way so we go through as quickly as we can. But if you see that the spikes are just coming up then you want to delay this fire dash. You need to be really careful in this stage that you maintain this fire shield. Uh, 
Um, okay, with the rotating handles here, uh, you want to make sure that you release this jump in that white part of the cylinder, so right in the middle. Um, with this, with the second one here, you you can see that sometimes you'll grab it down here and you'll be able to launch straight away. Uh, sometimes what will happen is you'll grab it here and you can't actually get enough of a launch to get up to where you need to go without going around it another time. So most of the time that's what I recommend. But if you see this and you think you've got enough time to go for it, then you can launch off here and that'll save a second or two. Uh, as you as you land here, you want to charge a spin dash to the right. You want to jump from this first uh, kind of X in the in the floor. And what that will do is you'll land on this enemy and break into a run out this way, and not get caught up in any of that. Uh, as soon as you grab that second ring on the on the slope, you want to do a small jump. Make sure you get underneath that uh, spike ball. Drop down here, and as soon as you get underneath that ceiling, fire dash out to the left. A bit like that. And you also want to roll under those enemies there. Um, at this point, losing the shield doesn't matter so much. So, if you get to this point and you see that you're going to take the hit, it doesn't really matter. There are one or two places coming up where having the fire shield will save you a fraction of a second, but it's nothing you can't get around. And in fact, if you do this well, you can actually do a spin dash, jump an insta shield through this section, and that will actually save you from getting hit. So in this case, I've almost done it. So you can see what it's meant to look like. If I jumped a little bit later, I'd have been fine. But because I landed here, the insta shield breaks, and that's what caused me to get hit. But you can just continue on there. That's its uh, one tap spin dash. Will land you directly on top of that enemy there. Um, up and out here. Um, again, you want to jump from about those three rings there, and that'll land you on this platform. Run through all of this. You can roll underneath all of it, or you can jump and kill the enemies. It's up to you. Um, here's the only other place where a fire shield would have helped you. If you don't have the, if you do have the fire shield, obviously you just jump through. But if you don't, you wait for the fire to arc as high as it can at the top. Jump, do an insta shield so that you move through the fire and then get hit by it anyway. So, you want to get hit by the tail end of it so it knocks you to the right and up to this platform. And then, same deal with these cylinders. Um, that jump needs to be fairly well timed because this gap here only stays open for a few frames. So you want to make sure that you well you have to jump down into that gap because it shrinks your hitbox enough for you to go through like that. Spin dash, roll through those. Hit that spring. Jump through the uh, the trigger there because if you if you um, uh, doing the scripted run through this, then you won't be able to get this jump off because you don't get control back until about here, which is too late. So jump off there, and there are two boxes down here. Ten ring box and a lightning shield box. You want the lightning shield. And you would think that if you jump down like this and did the insta shield, you would get the lightning shield. No, it doesn't work like that. You'll actually get the 10 ring box. And if you're lucky, 
you will then also get the lightning shield, but you'll be propelled down into the ground. What I do instead is I jump out this way so that there's only one target that the insta shield can give me, which is the lightning shield. Use that to bounce over the spikes and into the tunnel up ahead like this. Okay, now Sonic's behind this section of rock, but if you imagine that he's in the middle of the screen here, so just as he goes through this section of rock, which is like the third one, you want him to jump, clear that, hit the ceiling, clear that, and land on the switch that's just past this um, large ring here. If you try and if you try and just get to the end and slow down and land on it, uh, you'll end up in the special stage instead, which just looks really embarrassing. So you want to jump straight down onto it, straight up off it. Uh, spin dash. Uh, now, just as you see that second flamethrower appear on the screen, uh, now is the time to jump off the ramp. Hit the switch. Uh, now we're going to climb up using the lightning shield. Um, ideally, this platform here is gives you a nice gap in order to jump out that way. If it doesn't, the platform on the right here will often, if you try and jump to it from out here, often this spike ball will be up here and gleefully knock you off. Uh, we don't want that to happen, so if the long platform is over here, you probably want to play it safe. Anyway, as it's not, we can jump straight up to here. Now, again, we're going to use the, the X's on the ground. We basically want to spin dash from about here and jump from this X on the ground. Uh, it's the same deal as the one in Act 1. Hold the jump for three frames. It's really only a tap jump. And you need to have quite a bit of your spin dash speed. And you'll see here that you move into the into the stair like that. Now, as soon as you land here, this is only a very slight tap of left. You want to tap left for as short a time as you can. And as Sonic gets over this side of the screen, you actually want to tap right now as well. Because when we get to the next part, you want Sonic to be facing right immediately. So, what's going to happen here is there is a set of blocks up ahead that only Knuckles is supposed to be able to break, but we just went right through them. Okay, now we go up through the tube and we're confronted with a second set of them. And in order to get through them, we can do the same thing we did in Flying Battery and do a double spin dash. Now, it's not actually too hard because the tube is giving you all the speed you need. What's difficult about this is that the timing on it is a bit strange. Um, what you're going to see as we continue here is the, the camera is now stabilized, but it's not actually safe to do the spin dash for a few frames afterward. Um, for some reason, Sonic doesn't crouch for the first few frames, so all that happens is he just jumps. And once you do that, uh, you can't. You have to have. A, you have to set it up again. In order to set it up again, all you got to do is tap left, spin dash back down the tube, tap left, spin dash back down the tube. Uh, then once you get to the bottom, tap right, spin dash back up the tube, and attempt the two spin dashes again. Uh, so here I get it first go. So if you do those two spin dashes within, I think it's nine frames of each other. You go through the wall like that because you scroll it off screen in the time that the last spin dash carries you through that space. And then all you got to do is do a couple of jumps up here. And this is Knuckles' exit to the stage. And this will take you straight to Sonic's Hidden Palace. So that's how you speedrun Lava Reef. I am going to go through and play the whole video back without any interruptions.